Today we're going to take a look at how to use our light level on our micro bit in order to detect the amount of ambient light that is located in the room. For this assignment, we are going to take a look at our flow chart, which is going to basically ask us to do two different outcomes based on the amount of light that we have. So taking a look at our flow chart that's here, um, we're going to start off with a forever loop. This is going to allow our program to go ahead and loop continuously and constantly check the light. We do have a second event handler located off to the right, which is a button A press. This is going to be the sensor value test that you created in the previous activity. By pressing the A button, we should be able to see the actual numerical value that is located on the micro bit. This will tell us how much light is actually in the room at this time. Keep in mind that your light level will detect a range anywhere from zero, which is dark, to 255, which is its brightest. For this assignment, if we take a look at our forever loop, the two or the one condition we're really looking at here is if the light level is greater than 128. This is kind of the middle value of your light level. If the actual light level or ambient light is greater than 128, then we're going to go ahead and get a message to scroll across the screen. Now, this message that you create can be any message of your choice. That message will continually scroll across the screen until that light level drops below 128. So looking at that loop, we have to look at both our yes and our no conditions. If the light level is greater than 128, we already know that a message is going to scroll. But what should happen if that light level drops below that value? In this case, well, we're going to see an animation that scrolls across the screen. Now your animation is going to be an animation of your choice. It could be one that you've done from Project 1.5 or a brand new one, whichever you would like to see. So as we look at this flowchart, this is to help guide you in creating your actual code as we move forward. So we're going to go ahead and jump over to make code and look at how we can actually use both of these event handlers to create our light level code. Once you have done creating your code, you are going to want to test this not only on your emulator, but also on the micro bit itself. You can test it on the micro bit by going over to the window and testing the different amounts of light that is located in the room. You can also use your hands to cover up the front of the screen where the light level is located or use a flashlight that will give it a little more light to see if you can get your other outcome to appear as well. So looking over at our May code, I've already gone ahead and titled my program light level 5B and we're going to start with two different event handlers, our on start and our forever. Now going forward, we should never have any empty blocks located on the screen. So I know I don't need to use my on start. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in the drawers. We don't want that guy kind of hanging out there. The second event handler that we're going to use is an on a button press. So these are the two event handlers that are outlined in our flow chart forever and on a button press. Now let's go ahead and create this on a button press first. Okay. For this one, we don't need to create a variable because in the input drawer, we already have a light level. So there's no need to actually adjust or call for this to test a pin because the light level is actually located in the middle of your LED screen. So we're going to go ahead and write a very basic condition. All we want to have really happen is if we press the A button, we want to be able to show a number. Because our value is numerical, we'd rather use a number than a string. Now, if I press the A button at this point, we're going to see the number zero appear on the screen. We don't want the number zero. We want to know what the value of the light level actually is. So instead of using the zero, we're going to go over and use the light level. Once you drop that light level in, what you will notice is that you will get a little icon that will appear up here in the upper left hand corner once you press the A button. So once I select that on the emulator, this is going to allow me to adjust the light on the emulator to test if it works. By pulling it down, we can change the value to make it brighter, or by pulling it up, we can get a lower value that will make it darker. So you can use this to test your program before jumping over to your micro bit. Now, one of the things to clean this up a little bit is we, I like to kind of go ahead and add a clear screen. And once we clear that screen, we're gonna go ahead and pause that for about a second. And that's just going to kind of make the numbers a little bit easier for you to read on the actual micro bit. Now that you have your sensor value test, 
we have a way to kind of go ahead and test that while we're actually running the light level program. Now we need to kind of address our forever loop and what is going to happen with that light level. Now, because there is only one condition that is basically asking us, is it greater than 128? If not, then we're going to have to use an else statement. If there were multiple conditions, we would have to start to incorporate else ifs. But for this program, it's pretty basic. If it's greater than 128, scroll your message. If that is not true, we're going to run an else, which is an animation. So we're going to go ahead and take a look. We're going to use our logic statements, and we can bring in an if else statement. You can also bring in an if statement, and by clicking the plus signs, you can add more conditions going forward. In this case, we only need to have an if and an else to begin with. Now, we already know that our else statement is going to be our no, and our if statement is going to be our true. So we need to create a condition here. If the light level is greater than 128. So under your logic, you're going to find that you have comparison blocks. And we can bring in a comparison block, which you will see that that is 0 is less than 0. We're going to change the value to make sure that that is a greater than. And we're going to take that block and drop it where it says true. So that's no longer an infinite loop. It's now based off of a condition. And we know that this is not a condition here that would ever work because 0 will never be greater than 0. The two conditions we're looking at is if the light level greater than 128. So we know that we need to adjust the light level to make sure it's greater than a value of 128. In order to get our light level, we can go back into the input drawer and find the light level. Now we've created a condition that has either a true or false statement. It's either going to be greater than 128 or it's not. If it is greater than 128, our flowchart tells us that the value or what we need to see is to scroll a message across the screen. Well, since the value is going up, I'm going to go ahead and use my show string because string is what shows text. And I'm going to say it's bright in here. And that's just to let me know that the value is going higher, which means it is going to be brighter in the room at this time. So again, if that value is greater than 128, we're going to see our string basically scroll across the screen and it will keep doing that um, until that value actually changes. Once that value does go below 128, once the string ends, it will stop scrolling across the screen. So that addresses our if statement. That is our yes. And we're kind of stuck in this loop right now as long as it's greater than 128. But what we have to address is what happens when that value dips below 128 we should see an animation. At this point, if our value is less than 128, what you will notice is nothing is happening across the screen because there's nothing in this else statement. So what we're going to have to do is create some sort of basic animation. And you learn how to do this in Project 1.5. The animation I'm going to create for this is I'm going to have a dog just kind of scroll across the screen. So I'm going to use my images, and I'm going to use my scroll image, and I'm going to get rid of my variable at this time. And then I'm going to bring in a big image. And I can go ahead at this time and I'm going to create my dog. So I'm going to kind of go ahead and give him a little bit of a look. So there's my dog. So at this time, you can see if the value is below 128, what we should see is that dog actually scroll across the screen. Now, right now, if we look at this, it's sitting right at 128. And that if statement is stating it must be greater. So 129 and above, I'll get it's bright in here. If it's 128 or less, I'm going to get that dog scrolling across the screen. Remember, you can go ahead and speed that dog up or slow him down based on using your intervals. So if we go ahead and slow that down a little bit by making that 500, you can see that we can get him walking across. Once you are done, Please download this program to your microbit, test it in the room, and submit your screenshot for a grade.